Could even start it again for Ryan. How's that? Perfect for me. That's okay with you. Okay. Um, is it okay that we record the session? I do need to ask everybody that. It's okay with me. Yeah. Please. Thank you. Yes. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, Mukaseli, are you in? Ah, uh, yes, I'm in, Billy. Okay, great. Wonderful. All right. So I'm not too sure if. You, if anybody else can see the taskbar at the bottom, um, but when I'm presenting, okay, there's somebody else in there. I just want to see. Great. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful. Um, so you in? That's great. OK. I would like to start now, even though we don't have everybody here. Uh, is Kasim, uh, is Mohammed here? I believe it's on here, thanks. Are you there? OK, great. OK, wonderful. Uh, Michael is in? Yes, I'm in. Hello. Hello. OK, great. So I just want to check quickly. So Adam is here. Uh, Chandika? Not. Mksili Hi, Billy, is... I'm here. Oh, you are. OK, right, Chandi, great. Um, and yes. You know, Shlalen at, at, at Alexander Forbes, I think it is what Forbes. Uh, is it? Hi, uh, yeah. Great, great. Nasipi, where? N n n n um, what is your first name? Nasipi. That's right, Nasipi. Thank you. And Lerato is here? Right? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I thought so, okay. Um, Haladi? Uh, Klaas? Yes, I'm here. I just need to take the register. Great. Lydia is here. Mohammed, yes. And Sabello? Great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, great. Okay, every this is fantastic. Okay, so just about everybody is here. I'm just not seeing a full number of participants here. So, Okay, everybody, I'm going to share my screen now and start with a, a short presentation. I'm not, um, I know that it would be nice if we all introduced ourselves and, and so on. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it, it's a nice way to, to break the ice, but I'm sure that you're eager to get moving and um, I, I don't want to be, to run out of time. So I, what I'd like to do is, I, I know, I know that you would have certain um, questions to ask about the um, about this exam as well as something to say about your aspirations for this exam. My aspirations for all of you is that you should crack it this time around and um, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I know that that um, a lot of you will. Uh, it's, it's an odd exam. It's actually quite tricky because um, however well prepared you are, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that on the day you'll crack it because things can get quite intense um, and some subjects might be thrown at you that you've not seen before, that type of thing. Um, and, and the best thing you can do is to practice so that you're ready for the, for the um, unknown, so to speak. So, um, I'm going to begin by sharing my screen and I will switch off this camera that I currently have because I'm using another one. Oh, 
sorry. Okay, can you just let me know, can you see the presentation, everyone? Yes, yes we can. Okay, yes. good. All right. Yes. Okay. So, uh, a warm welcome to you all. Thank you very, very much for making it to the meeting this morning. It was short notice, and also we asked you to look at that paper. Uh, we'll go into that later when Ryan gets here, but in the meantime, I just want to give you an overview of um, of, of, of this course. Some of you have done it already um, and we've tried, I've tried my very best to make it fresh, uh, new content in terms of your assignments definitely and the session, technical sessions as well as your, your mock exam will be totally unique. So these are major pluses. On your side, what you're going to do is you're going to have the acted notes um, hopefully, uh, they do provide a lot of practice. The big difference between the acted notes and the way this course is run is that we are quite explicit in terms of what is required. In the acted notes, the, they are not as explicit. They're ex they're, there's a sort of 10% or more where they're expecting you to intuit what the actuary's response would be. That's apart from that. The active notes provide incredible uh, resources. Another thing they do do is that they, ins they, they insist that you have double spacing between paragraphs and we don't encourage that, especially if you're writing an email who wants to see huge spaces between. It actually interrupts the flow and it creates a fatigue for, this, for, the, for, the, for the reader. But anyway, let's move on. OK, so I <laughs> said, so let's move on and it's not moving on. Here we go. I will use the, the bar at the bottom here. I seem to have been stuck here a little. OK. For this course, we have got three major online resources for you. OK, we use Teams for our workshop sessions. We use Fuller, which is a learning management system, a platform, and we will there's YouTube as well. And then the second half, um, I'm going to go into those 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 applications um, and, and, and resources. And for the second half of the session, you'll have Ryan. OK, so that's just the overview. Now. The format of the course, OK. We try to give you continuous feedback. OK, and communication. So the communication will come in the form of announcements, which I will use from the Mind Matters site, which is on Vula, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and also any of your questions. OK, so don't hold back on a question. Send an email if you'd like to ask the question um, or, or you have something that that you think is maybe simple, but you need to know. Just send that question through. OK. Um, and then you get feedback on your assignment. All right. So you have two papers, I mean, two questions, and you will get feedback from a technical marker, feedback from a communication marker, and then we will give integrated feedback in these sessions for those questions that were asked, okay, for the, mock, for the assignment and the mock exam. So it's all targeted practice, targeted uh, feedback. And um, we, we are expecting that you should be able to work on some things on your own um, and 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 that feedback will will reflect it as well. So if there are a lot of grammar errors, for example, then the communication marker will address it in broad terms and say what you could do about them, but then won't go into every single mistake that that is the same on that page, for example, or for that question. OK. Um, so we have these three technical workshops on three full exam papers, OK, which today then um, in uh, late and in, in September and then of course your your October. 
So we also have, for those of you who have not done this course before, and by the way, I just want to say that I, I think that you all did incredibly well in the last exam. You really did, because you, uh, some of you were writing it for the very first time, and you showed that you could have made it if the circumstances had been different. The circumstances were very uh, pressurized, what with the proctoring, what with the connectivity, and all those things. So well done, I really want to say. So we have the video of March 2019, and, and some of you may want to revisit those, OK? And then we, we have activities on Bula, and I'm going to revise some of those and allow you to submit just simply a PDF as opposed to writing in Bula. And then I will be periodically looking at those things. And this is also uh, specific activities, activities to address how you format things and also activities to address the introduction, uh, the body of, 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 of a document and of course the conclusion. These are areas that you need to strengthen possibly. OK, so here we have it, all the dates that you need to remember. So as you can see from this, uh, this slide, we've got three major points here. All right. We've got the 15th of August, which is today, then the 19th of September, then the 17th of October. So we've organized it so that the program has has these three pivotal dates. And I, I try to um, be aware of other exams that are taking place, but I wouldn't know, of course, which other exams you're writing. So I'm, I'm giving you advance warning of when you need to submit also your assignment, which it will open up on the 23rd of August. It's available, be available on Vula, and then you do it and submit it by the 29th. So the idea is for your assignments is that you just go in and do it, OK? Because it will then throw up where the weak points are for you. You have the skills. Your, your, your undergrad and your workplace has given you the technical know-how to handle all the questions. And often you forget that because you are so worried about, about uh, something that's going to be thrown at you that you've never seen before. But if you just simply uh, try the questions and give yourself the time that's allotted, you will find that you will develop the skill to rely on yourself in situations where you are not given um, a whole lot of, in, of, of, of um, technical information, or, or rather not that, that a, a situation that is novel for you, new, different. OK, and those are the ones that throw us. So you could actually develop the skill to handle the unknown by just going in there and doing more papers and in within the time frame. And then today's session is going to be amazing because you're going to get an incredible amount of technical no skills, really. What to do when you get that paper. OK. So I'm, I'm encouraging you basically to just go in and try questions even without preparing it. So when you get your assignment on the 23rd of August, you will want to read through the whole thing, give yourself time, be accomplished with the technical stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, I don't suggest that at all. I just make it open for the 23rd. So if you want to submit it quickly, you can. But the closing date is the 29th because we on the other side, we are the markers are preparing to mark for you. OK, so um, yeah, I, I'm just saying that it doesn't help to spend a lot of time on a question. OK, it's not the same as spending a lot of time on your concepts for your uh, other subjects where you really do need that time. OK, we want to see that you can actually grapple with with uh, with the constraints. OK, so. Oh, about that, those of you who are joining for the first time and have the acted notes, there is a chapter which explains all the technical concepts that you would be required to understand and maybe to explain. And I would suggest that you really go over that so that you know that you're ready for it. But if you've just graduated, you should have all of that at your disposal already, OK? So don't worry too much about that. So um, as the dates are there, the, the feedback is within two weeks because we didn't know how many um, students there would be on this program. It tends to, to grow as, as the course, as the time goes close to the exam. 
and and how many markers we would have. If we are able to give that feedback sooner, we will, but definitely the workshop on the 19th of September, that is a date that's set and would be like today, okay? And then we've got an open date for the 26th if we should need it. Um, and then of course, the mock exam, which is on 3rd of October. So this was very useful last semester because everybody was in the mode of, pres of, of doing it online and uh, struggling with connectivity, etc. It's a Saturday morning, but um, you know we have that time frame, and and it's like simulating the real thing. So I encourage you all to take that mark exam, and then by the 16th of October you'd have feedback from the markers that had marked your papers, and then we'll have a, a session like Ryan is giving today on those paper on those questions. Okay. All righty. The other two, uh, the two main um, applications are Teams and then, of, of course, Vula. Some of you may know Vula because you were with us last semester. Some of you may have got, went to UCT so that you know Vula. We, we wanted to be on ASA's, on a satellite site of the ASA website, but that is still in development. So um, I'm sorry you won't have that. So nonetheless, you are a group, a select group on the uh, Mind Matters site. So Vula is the platform that the whole of UCT uses for their learning. So we are one course there. I mean, we, it's called Mind Matters, but we're a subgroup on there. So for that, I will send you instructions for those of you who haven't yet seen, um, who don't know about it, how to get onto the site. Um, it will look like this, okay? Um, on the left-hand side, you will see a whole lot of tabs. Uh, and, and there, lower down, you will see N211 Academy, exam preparation, N211 presentation, uh, toolkit, etc., assignments, all of that that's there. Those are the tabs that you'd be concerned with as a part of this group. If I send an announcement, it goes only to you. The, your assignments are only for you to see and, and to get. The rest of the, of, of, of the participants do not actually um, participate in that at all and they don't see what you submit etc so you're all safe in that regard however the site itself is public so if you just typed in vula um you for uct you'd be able to get to this site but i'm going to give you send you a login for those of you who are not on the site okay there we go this is the YouTube. OK, some of you know it. There is uh, there is me <laughs> giving a whole lot of. Um, yeah, of videos as well as the recordings that we make from these sessions. We're also going to put these on there. OK, um, it does say what each session covers. So um, and, and if it doesn't, I will send you all which what what paper it's talking about, etc. So there's a lot of material there. We had a workshop which we filmed last year in March and it worked very well because people asked a lot of questions and 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 those questions are generally heard. Sometimes it's unfortunate it's a bit quiet because we only had the one microphone. It was roving around. But uh, for the most part, the questions that they ask are questions that you would probably have. And, and maybe others can say what value they, they got from these um, videos having been on the course before. OK, so we're going to load today's recordings as well. Um, right, so moving forward, I couldn't help myself. I found this lovely little clip. And in fact, it was from um, a man called uh, Matendeni, I think his name is Matendeni. Yes, who I recently linked up with, and and it's so true what he says. All right, just do it, just do it. Now we're going to show you that. I'll show you this little video. Um, there we go. Uh, can can the other people see the video? Maybe it's just my connectivity, but I can't. 
Oh, shame. OK, I, I will play it again. Let's see. Um, can I just I get can, so? from the other guy. Can you guys see it? Yeah, we can. OK, yeah, then it won't help to, to, to replay it, Billy. <laughs> OK, all right, my love. So what I want to show, want to, uh, in, the, in the first, um, on my very first slide, I've got this picture of this Labrador sitting um, at the door at the back of, of this passage, and, and he has all these obstacles in his way. There's a Labrador is a big dog, and it looks like it's a whole range of things like perfume and nail polish and all sorts of bottles that could easily be knocked over. And so he's looking at this lot, wanting to get through, and then along comes the black cat, which by the way is is lucky. It's not 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 bad luck. Like, but in any case, the black cat comes in and just finds its way through just very easily. And he thinks, oh, well, it's that easy. Let me do it. And I want to tell you that the techniques, the, the, the point of this, this, this video is to, it's, it's like a metaphor. You have these obstacles. Sometimes we create them for ourselves. Sometimes they are genuinely there. And if you really just do as many papers as you can, as many questions as you can, just do them. Throw yourself in there it will actually find you will you'll be able to navigate this course much better because whatever comes up uh, for example if you have a sticky moment is it the fact that you don't understand the technical stuff is it the fact that you are struggling with that in production is it just the format oh my goodness i spent so much time on the format and it actually isn't the the, the amount of marks for the format is not really great those in that information by the way is all there on the videos OK, about how much, how many marks are normally awarded for a format and so on. And also on the Vula site, there is quite a considerable amount of information. So that was what that was for, to inspire you to just go on and do it. OK, so I'm just wondering now um, if, if you have any questions. I want you to keep my email address with you handy. I want you to also keep my uh, my cell phone number. Um, and uh, last last semester we did create I created a WhatsApp group so that I could even return some voice notes uh, on assignments or anything that that came to mind. Um, and you know, within a few hours, I'd be able to get back to you. What have you? If you had a burning question about something. Um, yeah, so that's also very useful. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can't. Is there somebody who needs to come in here? I'm going to turn this camera off and then I'm going to share uh, unshare my screen and then we can take some questions. Hi everybody, there's some chat here. Um, <laughs> so you did find it adorable, that, that, that thing. Thanks so much. OK, so I'd like to hear some questions from you. We have a few minutes to, to talk about things before um, Ryan gets here. So any questions? Maybe you want to post it in the chat. Can you hear me, everybody? Would yes. you raise your hand? You. You're fine? OK, yes, right. Yeah, good. you're fine. Yeah. OK, good. Well, thanks, Adam. All right, so. So. Um, I, I'd like to know if there's anybody who has a. A burning desire to ask something or wants to actually just vent about this exam. Anybody? Mo uh, the mo most of you haven't in 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 this um, in this group. Most of you haven't done this exam before, so I'm just going to say that you're going to need to put in a lot of work on the practice side. And others have done it before, and and it's been simple things that have stopped them from getting through. Okay, um, and so we. 
we want to be in a position where we can avoid that. But last last set sitting uh, people, it was a traumatic experience for a lot of people. I'm, I'm hearing some sort of uh, things there. OK, yes, somebody. Somebody had a hand up. No, who'd like to say? Yes, something? no, it, it's it's me, Billy. So I'm just trying yes. to understand it in terms of the practice that you're going to get and then also having to use fuller. And yes. I've heard that you mentioned that to you this session would actually allow us to to load a PDF. How is that compared to the platform that will be used to write the final exam? Because I think that it's quite important that we also get familiar with the platform of if Vula provides like more or less the same experience as the final platform. Because at the end of the day, we can be practicing on 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 our actual word, but yet the final exam platform it becomes slightly different. I think that that gap also it, it's something that also causes the frustration when you actually in the final exam and trying to do like work or stuff. Absolutely. So the thing is that that final exam, you're given time, you're given about a two week window where you can practice on their platform. Uh, and they did have that last time. And um, because you can only have one screen and, and some of you may work with two screens. I've seen some people have worked with three screens at work and you only have the one screen. So that's the limitation. And and um, it is it is it is similar in the sense that it's an online environment, the pressure of having to deliver something within a specified time frame. That's where it's similar. Bullet doesn't isn't uh, isn't a replica of the system that you will use. There will be there are a number of logins and I think that ASA have also learned from the experience that uh, they will be a little bit more explicit or careful with their instructions to you on on how to log in. So there, that was one thing I recall from the last exam is that some people didn't know that they had to enter again and again and they were just so nervous they do the wrong thing. So the, these are little things and, and, and what we'll do is um, we have Lerato here, we have um, others that have written before. I'll ask them to send through their experiences or maybe they could chat about it uh, quickly now to tell you what, what they learnt from that experience. Is there anybody here who'd like to say, uh, would like to offer some sort of um, input on that? Sure, Billy, I'm happy to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please tell so, us to see. So to an extent that the, um, uh, the exam is still written largely on Word and on PowerPoint, so I think that can be reassuring to other guys to say there's no need to worry much. The the system that we use is more on us to be able to monitor what we are doing on the screen. And the challenge for me in the previous session was that when there's disconnection, or because I'm working on Word when the uh, uh, invigilator is trying to communicate with me. I can't see it. It doesn't pop up anywhere to say somebody is hinting to me that you have disconnected. Try logging back again. So that is the only issue that I had. But given, I don't know about the other exam, for communication, given that I'll be either writing on Word or PowerPoint, I'm still able to, pre, to, to do most of my work. The only challenge becomes is the invigilator on the other side still able to see me or there was a disconnection that on on my side because I'm focused on writing that or answering the questions I can't I can't see. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Iwa, for that. Your um, it's it's I think I think that 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 you could all trade off the type of experience that a setting like this gives you. For example, now I'm here, right, and I'm meant to be in control of the team's meeting. Imagine you in control of your exam, but I'm also having to look all the time at um, other things, uh, meeting chat, uh, raising hands, anybody who's you know um, having difficulty chatting or what have you. So it's a type of alertness and, a, and a, an awakeness. And that is unfortunately part of what is being examined because it does imp it does impact your your time uh, to handle the rest of the questions, etc. that are, are there before you, the real content that you should be worried about. You don't want to be worried about those other things, OK? But they're there. So the, uh, the thing is that the more practice you do, the less you'll be worried about um, about the content then, because you can you know, have a little bit of extra um, leeway, so to speak, with 
with other technicalities that might arise, as Lucy Iwa uh, mentioned. So the more uh, proficient you are in Word, the more proficient you are in PowerPoint, <clears throat> the more adept you are at putting in the format. Uh, the, these are areas where you can save time. You can't save time on reading the question. The question has to be read very carefully and you have to engage with the question. That's always important. Um, and planning your question takes time and that you must always do. Now, you don't get the paper on as, as a printout and you can't print it out. So that is also something you need to get used to. So when um, you have, the, when, I, when I give you the assignment, maybe what you should do is you shouldn't print the assignment out. You should put it onto your desktop and actually answer the question as if you were writing the exam. So try that, okay, um, as a preparation. And then whatever rears its head while you do that are the areas that you do need to work on. And you need to reflect on where it was that you were sticky. OK. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the mark. OK. Class, yes. So, so it's, sorry, it's me again. So thank you very much, Monsieur, for that feedback. So, but now when you, you're saying that you're using your Word and your PowerPoint, do you download the template somewhere or you're actually using the one that is actually on your laptop? Because I think there's actually different of types of Word and, and PowerPoint. Maybe your laptop could be like the 2016 and yeah and then maybe the one that we're supposed to download if there is one that we need to download it could be another vision that can actually also cost time in terms of trying to find the formatting and all those sort of things good point so so asap does provide the templates but the very same template that they provide they also in the two week period that uh, billy mentioned they also provide you with the template of the same um, uh, document so you are familiar with uh, beforehand so it okay. say yes, you won't be using a template from your from your from your Microsoft Office uh, package. As I will provide you with one, but the very same that those templates will be provided to you at least two weeks before the exam. So you will have enough time to acclimatize yourself to to the new templates. Oh, all right. No, thank you so much. Okay, so I believe that somebody can't use the meeting chat. So sorry for interrupting there. Um, and I'm just wondering, is that, um, who is that? Uh, I believe it's me, it's Asavela. I can't access the chat box saying it's only available to team members. Oh, I'm not too sure why that is, why you can't do it, because uh, Rani was able to do it. I'm so sorry, Asavela. Would you like to, can you, can you voice what you have now, perhaps? Can you can you tell me what you would like to say? No, no, I was just informing you of the situation. No. Oh, fantastic. I will have a look at that for next time because you'd want to do that. Thank you very much for that. OK, great. So thanks for those questions. Uh, so this forum is great for that. And if you feel the need to, to, to get together, let's say, um, uh, because a lot of things will crop up between now and, uh, and the 26th of September, which I've left open that morning so that we can actually um, uh, you know, throw, pull together some more questions and concerns that you may have that 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 will, uh, that came about as a result of the assignment. Okay, so we'll do, we'll we'll keep that open, and if you want to join, you can, and we can learn from each other. And I hope that 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 will be okay for you. All righty. Uh, Billy. Uh, yes. Is the offer to vent still open? Yes, sure. I just want to do a quick <laughs> vent. <laughs> so this exam has hurt me so much. <laughs> okay. um, so I wrote, um, I wrote, so I didn't write last session, but I wrote both exams last year. Yes. And so the first one, I understand, I, I wasn't very prepared, but the second one I was actually quite prepared, but I got thrown off by the calculation. Like I actually couldn't do it. So I was like, how am I some, supposed to communicate to this person? Because I don't know what I'm doing. So even mm. though I could communicate, I just I just couldn't do the calculations. So I was so hurt. But hopefully this time it's going to be fine. So the calculations are important, but they're not everything. OK, just mm. remember that if you if you if you if you missed the, the perfect answer, um, and you were out of it, that's not a, an issue. The issue is whether you're in the right direction. 
Okay. Yeah. So yeah. if you are, that's the only thing. So, so that's a tricky bit. Um, and we do tend to want to get the calculations above all correct. And we'll spend so much time on that and it does unsettle you. So you've identified that that's your sort of like Achilles heel. If you, if you don't get those calculations, you tend to get um, worked up and then not be able to focus on the rest of, of what is required. So, yeah. So, so you're going to work on that. And, and today, Ryan is also going to help you because you obviously did the May 2019 paper then. Yeah, I did it. OK, so today will be very good for you um, uh, in terms of. Please, what I want you to do is I want you to extract the universal principles from today's session. Dealing with the May, May 2019 paper, but there's so much there that you can carry forward for yourselves, OK, into any to transfer into an exam situation. So if there are principles to pick up, you can get that and, and 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 also how to find how to navigate a way of working the calculations out even if you maybe don't understand them fully that's why i say give your put yourself under um under under pressure i used to say previously no prepare yourself well know everything then go under the pressure no if you go under the pressure straight away, you will learn to deal with the choke that you experience in an exam. That feeling that you can't handle the situation because not so different. And it's, yeah. it will be it's very good for you because now you realize, you know what? I can actually do this. I actually am learning how to think on my feet and to subdue uh, the panic completely. It just goes out the window because you see it as as just a normal part of accessing what you already have. You just need to awaken it in your brain. OK. Yeah. OK, thanks, Billy. OK, great. Um, so. Hi, Billy, can I, can yes, I ask? Yes, 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 come, come, Lerato. Um, So I think my question is more on, um, on the exam. So yes. will ASA provide the exam in the form of a PDF this time around? Because when I was writing the exam in the previous session, apart from all the technical issues, I found that it was a bit difficult to, you know, because when you practice, you have the exam in a PDF format and you can highlight. But the exam was on the ASA Ed um, platform, so you couldn't really highlight or you know, do anything. So do you know if they'll probably change and provide the exam in the form of a PDF? Or is that something that you can suggest um, to say, can we have the exam in the form of a PDF instead of reading of reading it off the um, ASA Ed platform? Right. I doubt so, Lerato. Uh, you see, I, I, I doubt that that you could do that. So this is where you need to be agile. And that's why I always have my um, my clipboard with me, right? And I'm writing down constantly uh, what is um, what, what 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 I need to take note of, and um, and this is what you will have to do. You'll have to learn to write down your your plan and the points, which Ryan is going to go into quite into a lot of detail with. Um, and and so so what what almost it's a double writing. It's it's taking what's in that exam paper, translating it for yourself on paper, and this you can do. You're allowed to have paper with you with the camera there, um, you know. And um, and I know it's a it's a fag, like it's a bore, but actually it gets you to engage with the content better. The highlighting is fine because you remind it when you go back for that highlighting. But it's almost as if you need to find a highlight for yourself. You see the issue, you see the point to be made, you take it and you put it on your page. And the page becomes the thing that you need to refer to. Did I get this? Why did I put this in here? Have I put it into my document? Yeah, so it is challenging for you. I admit it's challenging for you. But I, I have no doubt that you'll be able to acquire the skill for that, provided you are also prepared in other areas. That's why we really push the format uh, to do things in a particular way. 
and, and also how to read the exam paper. So Lerato, I will ask them anyway, and I will get back to you on that. But my feeling Thanks, is really. it, won't, it won't be possible because a PDF you can also convert to Word quite easily. So I think maybe that's why. And also you can, oh, copy, yeah. you can you copy can. and paste. You can copy and paste from a PDF. So I, I think that's probably why they did that. But they've learned a lot from this last session, session and I'm sure a lot of that they're going to um, bring forward. So let me just see now. So, so thank you for that, Lerato. I want Thanks, to see Betty. if Ryan is here. Um, yes. And if you manage to get in. Tafara, are you here? No. I'm, I'm here, Billy. You're here. Oh, great, great, great. <laughs> thank you, Tafara. Yeah. So, so, so um, yeah. Um, so for those of you, okay, that have already written this exam, I want you to pay such careful attention to what Ryan has to say today. His session is quite methodical and you'll be able to see for yourself, now this is something I can use. All right? Have I actually been preparing my answers in this way? Okay, so I'd like you to, and for those who've not had the benefit of doing the exam before, you'll, 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 you'll gain quite a lot because you'll have this from the beginning. Okay, so I'm just checking to see um, if Ryan, okay. Okay, so actually we have a few minutes, don't we? I'm, I, I always put my phone a bit ahead of time so that I'm never late, uh, but I forget that other people aren't doing that. Uh, we are before, it's before 11, just before 11, right? Ah, Matule? Yes, you have a question? Uh, yes, so Lerata, thanks a lot for that because in my head, I did have a, a you know, a PDF in mind where you can highlight your key points um, to help with the planning. So for you or anyone else that took the previous exam, I just maybe want to get a, uh, you know, a, a thought of what was your experience with the planning? Did you do your planning on your paper, your hard copy or on the site? And if you did it on the platform itself, how were you affected by the scrolling up and down? Because from my experience of writing my previous exam, I felt like the scrolling up and down sort of did affect, but maybe not to a large extent. So for communications, would you maybe advise planning on hard copy or on, or on the platform itself? Because if you can't highlight key points, then it sounds like using a hard copy would probably be a tad bit hard. Um, yeah, I'm just. Yeah, um, so Matule, the I think the, the biggest issue with me, so, so well, what I usually do, even if I do have a PDF and I can highlight, I do note my points, um, but because of the technical issues, um, I lost 40 minutes. So I, I only started writing the exam 40 minutes after it had started because I just could not log in, you know? So because of that, I guess my planning was a bit thrown off because now I had to rush through the paper and I was in a panic. But um, generally, even though I do have a PDF, and I highlight, I note my points um, down. I'll even do sometimes, uh, well, when I was practicing, I would do like a copy and paste because I can copy and paste from a PDF and then just paste um, all the points so that when I write um, and I do my subsections, then I, I can make sure that I have considered all the important things that I highlighted and I pasted on my answer sheet so yeah it was it was just unfortunate um for me i felt that you know because of this program i was very prepared because um it actually forces you to study and it's also very nice because you get feedback from technical markers something you wouldn't um ideally get if you're not in the program and you're just practicing papers by yourself so i felt very prepared it was my first attempt i felt very prepared I almost got it because I got an FA 
Um, mm. I almost got it first attempt, but because I lost 40 minutes, I mean, if I didn't lose that 40 minutes, I would have easily gotten the exam. So the program is good. Um, when I plan, I note um, it was just unfortunate for me in the previous session. So I guess for now, it's going to be very important that when you read this thing, the paper for the first time, you actually write the points down. Yes, yes, and not highlight. Yeah. Because you can't highlight. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, cool. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Lerato. I'm, I'm so pleased that you were able to relate that. So it's, it's actually trying to maximize one's technique with regard to things that you have control over. And that's why the practice is so important. Please don't think that because you are always communicating that, that, that you can communicate in this exam situation. You must take it as confidence, yes, that you are able to communicate, but there are a number of other factors that you need to get on top of. And, and, and that's, yeah, that's important. But it was Sorry, great to hear. That. Yes. Sorry, just one quick question for Lerato. I just want to ask, so you're saying you lost 40 minutes because of technical issues and they, you didn't get that 40 minutes back, so you, they didn't um, extend your time. No, I didn't extend my time because, I mean, what can I do? You you get an instruction well before the exam to say, please ensure that you submit your paper uh, before the time stops. So by the time I logged in, it was already like, what is it? Um, yeah, 40 minutes into the exam. And that timer um, does not consider the fact that you just logged in. Um, it it started um, counting from nine o'clock. So if I'm coming in at like 20 to 10, um, you know, it's it's over for me. When the time stops, the platform shuts down. So I just had to submit. I didn't get my 40 minutes back, unfortunately. It is what it is. Uh, can I just say something there? Um, yeah. I, I think they also learned from that experience because I think comms was probably one of the first exams um yeah i wrote, yeah, I wrote <laughs> essay two last session and the time i was actually starting when you log in so if you came in at half past nine your three hour timer would start at half past nine so i think they did learn from that experience because i do have friends that had written before me and they had a the same experience as lerato but i didn't that's lovely to hear. I'm so pleased about that. That's, that makes everyone feel a lot better. Because I kept um, I kept getting kicked out of the platform. Um, but then luckily for this course, you don't have to write in the platform. So I think like that's what makes like communications better because you only have to log in again to view the question or maybe at the end when you're trying to submit, it might kick you out. That's where the risk is, but really, you don't really have to worry about getting mm -hmm. kicked out because you're still writing outside the platform, if I'm correct. Okay, that's also good to know. Thank you, Tato. Thank you for that. Great stuff. Okay, so we can continue to ask questions. You can use this Teams uh, platform to ask questions in the general. Um, log in and just ask the question. I'll I'll check up on it uh, every day. I'm 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 there, and uh, and then we'll get answers for you. I think I think this type of community is great. You don't want to be writing um, exams in isolation. Uh, it really does help to to speak about things, and then everybody benefits with the answers that come up. So that's another plus. Okay, so I just want to see. Um, I, I I believe that. Uh, that Ryan is here. Are you here, Ryan? Yes, I'm here. Oh, great, wonderful. Okay, so um, I will keep an eye on 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 the chat. Uh, just want to introduce you, introduce you to everybody. Um, so I'm very excited for you all today because um, I approached Ryan as um, a seasoned examiner marker for communications uh, if 
he could give us a technical session. And and uh, with the wealth of experience that Ryan has, um, and I've got a little preview on on his um, presentation, and I'm, I'm sure that you're going to have a, reap a lot of benefit from today's session. So Ryan, I'm going to hand over to you uh, to, to start with this session. If any of you have questions, then we could post it in, in, in the meeting chat. Some of you, um, and then if you can't, then you've got my number uh, to just send me the message if you didn't manage to get into the chat. Uh, and, and, and then Ryan, you could also tell the participants how you would like to handle the questions, whether you do them at the end or not. But in terms of uh, the layout, I thought it might be appropriate if you dealt with the one question first and then little we break after that, maybe after a few questions and then with the second question, just because of, of uh, perhaps your fatigue and in, um, attention fatigue and, and, and this, uh, us <laughs> on this side. Is that okay with you, Ryan? Yep, that sounds perfect. Great, thank you so much. So you can assume the, the screen. Okay. Right. Uh, so I have figured out exactly how to get myself and the um, presentation on at the same time at this stage. So okay. I'm going to All right. Then fine, just use the presentation. Okay, That's also the presentation. That's uh, fine. I'm going to pull that up now and then I'll, I'll give you just a okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, you didn't hear any of the, the chit chat beforehand, did you, Ryan? A little bit, just the tail end. Oh, the tail end, okay. Yeah. Uh, that... so, so, so here now you've started yeah, I'm still recording. OK, good. I just want to make sure I'm still recording. So is is my presentation showing? Someone oh. else has started sharing, it says, but I don't I don't see it. Does everyone else see it? Okay. Again? No, not yet. Shit. There we go. I can see it now. Right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So welcome everybody. Thank you for time with you. Um, what I'm going to do is take you through a presentation and give you an opportunity to ask questions, particularly about the May 2019 paper for communications. So um, we'll work through question one. Um, we'll go through a little plan of, of how to how to tackle it. Um, and then also um, go through some some details of the question. We'll go through we'll have a look at a, a model solution. And then we'll also just talk about some of the common uh, mistakes that get that get made. Um, the, the focus of the presentation is very much the, the technical part, so, so maybe it's useful just to talk a little bit about how the paper is marked, if you're not familiar with that. Is that there's separate consideration given to the technical aspects and the communication aspects. So actuaries mark the technical content um, and then communication specialists mark the communications content, and you do need to do well on both um, to be able to pass it. So my presentation is, is aimed more at dealing with the, the technical part and how you make sure you maximize your marks there. Um, but I do have a couple of things around the communication piece as well, which I'll, which I'll talk to. OK. Um, right. Um, so we'll start with with question one. Uh, sorry, and then just for with regard to questions, I mean, interrupt me whenever you want. Put your hand up. Uh, I've got the little screen up on the side, so I can see when you when you want to ask something. Um, I think it's useful to ask the questions when they're relevant to the the context, rather than waiting till till the end. Okay. All right. So shall we get into it? Um, so um, question one, sort of my, my agenda for, for tackling this is first I'm going to talk a little bit about a plan of attack, um, how to how to approach the question. Then we'll have a look at the at the question. 
Importantly, we're going to look at um, three aspects of the question. And you've got to deal with all three of these um, if you're going to do well. Um, the first is, is the facts, understanding what you've been, you know, recognizing what you've been given, then understanding what's going on. Um, so some questions require you to do a lot more interpretation than, than others and, and figuring out what's actually happening. And then the third piece is looking at the instructions. So what have you been told to do? Um, we'll have a look at then the solution. Um, I'll show you a little mock uh, or sample solution. Um, it's not the only answer, um, but it is it is an answer to look at. And then I'll go into some mistakes made. So what can what can you learn from the mistakes that other people have made? Um, when I go through marking papers, um, these are the types of things that I that I see. OK, and then if there are any final questions, we can deal with those right at the end. But as I say, interrupt me as we go along if you want. Wait, so let me interrupt you now. Um, cool. So my hand raised thing is not working, so I'll just do it like oh. this, which sucks. But um, I just want to ask if the presentation is going to be available separately. So without having to come back to the recording. Like the yes, part of the slides. Absolutely. OK, cool. Thank you. All right. OK, so so this is my little simple plan. Um, and you must go through these steps with every single communications paper. Um, if you miss if you miss one of these steps, you're probably not going to pass. Um, the first thing is you've got to have a look at who your audience is. You've got to find in the question as much information about who you're talking to. Um, and that goes for, for no matter what it is, whether it's a presentation, an email, um, a letter, you name it. You've got to know who the audience is um, and what do, what, do they, what do they want. So you've got to identify what they want to achieve out of your communication. So what's, what's your audience going to do with this information that they are, that are getting from you? Um, and then also, what do you need to achieve? So there, there are two aspects. One is you know, what, what message you want to deliver, and then also what is your audience going to get out of it? Um, so you need to think about those two aspects. Then identify the facts. Go through the question with a fine tooth comb and identify all the information that you've been given. There's a, there's a general rule that we don't provide any information in the question that you don't need. Um, if it's in the question, you need it. Um, so it, it's a useful checklist to make sure that you've covered everything. Um, if there are facts in the question that you haven't dealt with, there's probably something that you've missed. Um, the third one is probably the, the hardest under time pressure. Um, and I'll just, particularly when we get to question two of this paper, um, that that might come might become more obvious is that it's sometimes it is a little difficult under the time pressure to understand the situation um, that you've been presented with. Um, so but it is important to do that because if you can't if you don't understand what's going on, it's very difficult for you to communicate it. Um, so and I've got a couple of tips later on as to how to how to deal with that if you are struggling. And then the last one is note the instructions that are given. OK, what does the examiner want to see? So it sort of overlaps a little bit with the um, the audience expectations, um, but there are specific things that the examiner is telling you to do. I mean, one of the simple ones that we see quite often is it says do a PowerPoint presentation and then someone will do Word. Um, things like that, they, they seem like silly things, but um, you're going to lose a lot of marks because you're not following the, the instructions that have been given. So, so look for those instructions that the examiner is specifically, specifically asking for. All right, okay, so that's my little high-level plan of attack. Um, so this particular 
so I'll just carry on if, if, if no one stops me, I'll just keep going. So shout. Um, so this particular question, um, if you've if you've had a look at it, it was your your friend has start is starting a business. Um, his name is Robert, and he has been granted a loan by the bank to to finance his business. And they've gone and presented him with with two options. Um, and you need to give him some guidance. He's looking for your help to decide which of these loan options he must take. OK, so that's sort of high level what that question was about. OK, um, so there are a couple of little very basic um, actual compound interest type um, uh, um, aspects in there, um, as well as some specific information that was given in, in the question. Okay, so let's let's go through the facts piece for this question. So the first one is about our audience. Who is it that we're talking to? So the first thing is that he's a friend. Um, so that immediately is telling you about how you're going to be engaging with um, this audience. Your, your your tone of language, the type of um, phrases you can use, um, and, and the communication style that you're going to use. Um, you also you're going to use friendly um, terms to engage with them rather than a sort of formal a formal type approach, which you would use maybe with someone who was you know not not a friend um, in a different relationship. Okay, you're starting a business. Um, you've had a previous phone call, so you've you've pre you've spoken about this before, um, so you do have a little bit of a common understanding of of what's going on already. Um, this is not the only piece of information you've got, the email that you received. We also picked up that he's he's uncertain. He 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 doesn't know how to approach this. He's and he's looking for reassurance from you. Um, so you've got to aim to give that reinsurance. It doesn't. You know, that's what your audience is looking for. He, he's also he, he says in there that he gives an indication that he is taking on this risk of starting a new business, um, and he doesn't want more risk. He is he's risk averse. Um, so when you're thinking about your recommendation for which loan he's going to take. Um, you need to have that in the back of your mind that he's he's risk averse um, and that should push you in a, in a certain direction. OK, he understands how how loans work. You were, you were told that. Um, but he's he's unable to do the comparison. He can't work out, you know, which one costs more than the other. Um, so you need to help him with that that comparison. And then lastly, he wants a specific recommendation. So this is quite an important one because um, often in the question, in, in questions, there will be um, very specific guidance as to whether you must give a specific recommendation or whether you must just present options. And it's very important that you identify which of those you're expected to do. Um, because certain situations, it wouldn't be appropriate to give a recommendation. Um, I think of an example of hand, um, but there might be some advice type things where maybe you and your role um, writing this are not licensed to give that advice. So we wouldn't expect you to give a specific recommendation. Um, so there you need to make sure that you recognize that in a situation where you have to give a recommendation or one where you just need to show the options and don't give a recommendation. Because if you're not expected to give a recommendation, you will lose marks if you do. Um, and it'll, it'll negative, it's not just you won't get marks, you'll actually have marks deducted. Okay, so that's very, very important. Okay, all right, everybody's still with me. Okay, um, so you'll see there's, you know, at the superficial level, you might just identify he's he's Robert, um, and um, that he's a friend. But you need to unpack it in more detail um, to identify 
who this audience really is and, and what are the, the things that are are behind their request for their, their assistance from you. Okay. All right, so, so that was about the audience. Okay, so now we need to establish all the facts about the, the loans. Um, so here we'll, we need to work through all the information that we've been given. Don't try and make up external facts. Okay. Um, quite often we do see candidates who will pull in other information. You don't, you don't need to do that. All the information that you need to use, the fact type information, will will be in the question. Um, so here, I think that the loan's been granted. Um, he doesn't need to worry about um, any differences in security or providing security. We can ignore that. The question says we can we don't need to consider it. Um, it's quite clear there are, there are two loans, and he needs to choose which one of those loans he's he's going to going to take. We have been told, and I suppose this one's not strictly about the loan itself, but the, we have been told that um, interest rates are expected to rise. So that's that's quite important to make a note of. Um, and then we were also told that if there's spare money available, we can invest it at prime less three and a half percent. Okay, and there are no other options for investment. Um, so, so we can't bring any other um, any other possibilities of what to do with any uh, differences in cash flow between these loan loan requirements. That's the only um, option we've got. Okay, and then common to both the loans, they're both for the same value, they're both for the same term of five years. Um, you'll often see these sort of simplifying type instructions. Um, so, for example, that interest is only at the end of the year, all repayments happen at the end of the year, because I mean, we, we're not trying to make the uh, calculation complicated. We want the complicated, <laughs> sorry, we want the question to be relatively easy to apply. Um, without unnecessary complications. We want to get to the important piece of, of the communication. Um, so you will often see these type of um, simplifying assumptions. So if you're getting into a very complex calculation, you, maybe there's a, a simplifying assumption or something that you, you've, you've missed in the facts, um, because it, it shouldn't be too, too difficult to, to calculate when you get, if, if you get to that sort of uh, requirement. Okay. Um, okay. Then, then we've got things that are different between the two loans. Um, so the one was a fixed interest loan, and this one was fourteen and a half percent per annum. Um, and repayments, we know, were made at the end of each year, and they are uh, include both capital and interest. So. And then repayments would be at each of the end of those five years. So the five equal uh, installments to repay it. And then there's this extra little feature on this loan that allows them to settle the loan early. So it's just a just put it on the side there. We'll come back to it later. But it's just one of the facts about this loan that it has this early settlement option. Um, so. You know, now you, you're thinking about uh, what you've learned about this first loan. And the first thing you're probably going to notice is that if you're paying off capital in each and every year, then your your capital will be reducing over time. Um, so that your interest cost, even though the rate might be fixed, your interest cost will be reducing in, in RAND terms. Okay, so just, that's something just to recognize when, you, when you're looking at those facts. And then the second loan is the variable interest one. So, so this, the way this loan works is it's set based on prime. So the prime interest rate quoted by the banks, and there's a premium on it of 2% a year. And they give you that prime is currently 10.25% per annum. Um, the repayments here are only interest. So at the end of each year, 
you're going to pay, Robert's going to pay 10.25% plus the 2%, so 12.2% on the full 500,000 of the of the loan. Um, and then right at the end of the five years um, is then going to repay the full capital. So he's going to pay, he doesn't have to pay the capital each and every year. He can only pay the interest, which is probably going to be quite a bit less than what's under the loan one. But then at the end of the year, sorry, at the end of the loan term, um, he's going to then have to pay the full amount of, of 500,000. And on this one, there's no early settlement allowed. He's committed to this loan for the full five years um, and he can't, he can't get out of it. All right. Okay, so then we get to understanding the, the calculation. So what I did was I just put up my little workings of, of how this, this loan would work. And, and you would probably do something similar. Um, first loan, just, do you see my cursor when I move it? I assume so. Um, so here we've got our original opening capital um, and we would have worked out based on this interest rate in a five-year term payable in arrears that the installment must be 147, 47 rand a year. Um, that will be made up of an interest component, the interest on the original capital, and the balance is paying off capital. Okay. So that at the end of the year, um, this is how much the 500 less the 74,000 is giving him his closing capital. And then the next year, he'll start with that closing capital and so on uh, until he pays off the loan. So the closing capital at the end of the five years will be zero because he's paid it all off. We can check we've added all these up that they've got to 500, so we've paid off the full capital. We can add these up and know that the full interest cost that, is, that has been incurred over the, over the five years is 236,000, almost 237,000 Rand. Um, and this is what it would have cost in total. Okay, the seven hundred thousand odd. Um, where where a lot of um, so everyone, when I get to the mistakes, I'll talk about some of these um, where where they went wrong. The early settlement. So here, the way the early settlement worked, it was one and a half percent of the capital for each year that it is brought forward. So if we settled at the end of year one some reason came into some money or maybe even you know new loans are available at much cheaper rates maybe it would be worthwhile to to settle it early you would then pay off this full 425,000, and his penalty or his charge for that would be one and a half percent times the 425,000, um, and he's brought it forward by four years so times four and that would give you the, the 25,000. Okay. Um, so that's that's how loan one works. Fairly straightforward um, fixed installment loan over the the five years. Loan two is the one where the interest rate is variable, and in the question they tell you only consider the prime rate of ten point two five. Um, it doesn't, the question is, is telling you not to worry about the fact that, you know, prime might be different in year two or year three, just show it based on 10.25 because otherwise it's going to get too messy and, and, and complicated to deal with in an exam situation. So we, we've been told to only use the 10.25, that's the extra premium that we were told, extra margin on the prime rate that we were told about. And that gives us the 12.25. So now on this loan, we've still got the same opening capital. We've still got our five years. Um, but here we're only going to pay the 12.25% on the opening capital, which is the 61,000. Nothing towards capital. So we've still got 500,000 capital. That will be our opening the next year. And the same happens in each year um, because the capital just doesn't change. Um, and then 
in this last fifth year, so at the end of the fifth year, they now have to pay that last year's interest as well as the capital to settle the loan so that we close the loan account. Um, so that would mean that the total interest that we've paid is 306,000 and the capital is the same. So we've, on both of these loans, we've fully paid our capital. So on a first look, this loan is looks much more expensive because we have paid 306,000 rand in interest compared to 236,000 rand in interest. But what we haven't recognized is that in the early years, here he had to pay 147,000 and here 61,000. So what he had an opportunity to do something with that difference. So that, what's it, 80 odd thousand rand. So that he had an opportunity to do something with that difference. Um, and the opportunity he's got, we were told about the option to invest at prime less three and a half percent. So that's the next piece of the, the calculation. Okay. So here we're now looking at it more from a, a savings point of view. Instead of the loan, we're now going to accumulate. So we start off with nothing. Um, we've got our prime rate less than 3.5 percent. So we, we're earning 6.75 percent on our savings. Um, so at the end of the first year, we will have that as capital. We don't earn any interest because you know, the first the first installment was only at the end of the first year. So we'll bring that forward to opening for the new year. Um, we then earn some interest on that during the year. And we would have had a new um, difference, the 86,000 between the fixed and the variable. And so on, we'd, we'd accumulate this capital amount. And then in the last year, we're going to have that big negative difference because the variable requires that full capital, the 500,000 that needs to be paid out. And what we can see here is that the, we earn some interest um, obviously on the savings and we earn a total of 62,200 Rand. So, so if we're going to compare these loans, we actually need to look at the net interest cost of these two loans. The first was, the first one just had a pure interest cost of the 236,000. On this one, we had the 306, but we've been able to earn another 62, which would then reduce that cost to 244,000. So it's still more expensive by 700,000, ah, sorry, by 7,000 Rand. Okay. All right, so this was the, the important part around doing the calculations and understanding how the loans uh, worked and how you are able to compare them using the, the investment option. Okay. All right, um, so now we've done we, we've done the calculations uh, to understand how they're working. We now need to just understand some of the features and I'll touch on some of this a little bit earlier. The, the fixed loan has got the higher interest rate, but because it's charged on a reducing balance, the total interest cost is lower. Um, and that for that, because of the difference in the repayments, we need to use the savings um, or the investment piece to try and equate them. Um, the savings interest rate we notice is much lower than the, the loan interest rate. So the one there's a margin on the prime rate, the other one there's a, a discount. Obviously, that's how the banks make their money. Um, and then there's this early settlement option. It, it comes at a cost, but it is an option. So the client can Robert can use it when he wants to. He doesn't have to use it. Um, it we would only use it if it's if it's valuable to him. Okay, so those are the important features to identify. Then we also need to understand the risks. So the fixed loan has has risk, um, and here we've got that each year he's got to be able to pay that hundred and forty seven thousand. So there's a risk that he won't have enough money to to meet that. Um, there's a there's a risk that interest rates decrease 
So he'd be quite happy if interest rates went up, but there's a risk to him. He could have actually got this loan cheaper if interest rates do decrease. Um, but that's where the early settlement option adds some value for him. Because if interest rates did decrease, he could settle this loan and then go get a, a cheaper loan. Um, okay, and the variable loan has risk. So here it's because prime, the prime rate variability. So prime rate can increase which will increase the interest costs and then, um, but to mitigate that to some extent, the savings interest rate also increases. Um, there's uncertainty in the repayments and that's, that's an important one to note. He doesn't know what prime rate is going to be, so it could be, you know, it could be much higher. Um, and then he's got another risk that he doesn't have the cash to be able to settle at year five. Um, it's a big obligation all at one time. So he's going to have to be sure that he's got that available. Um, but if he's disciplined and um, he, he can save, if he can meet the obligation for the 147, he should be able to save most of it. Um, he'll be a little bit short, but, um, but he can save most of it. And then we, were, we got an indication that the increase in prime is more likely to decrease. Um, and then lastly, the, we noted from our calculations that the variable is more expensive. Okay, so, so this was all the thinking that went into understanding how these loan savings risks and features were, were working. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we've established, we've established all the facts. Um, we've understood everything that's that's going on in, in the situation uh, that we've been presented with. Um, now we need to turn our attention to the instructions that we have been given. And I'll, I'll break this down into to two parts. Um, the first is the instructions that the examiner gives you directly. Um, and we'll come to the others just now. Um, so you've been told you must write an email reply to Robert. Um, you've been given instruction about the number of words that you've been allowed to use. You must include a comparison between the features. Okay, so we went through that and we understood the differences between the features, so we can, we can do that. You must show him the difference between the annual and the total interest he would pay. So from that little buildup of the or the, you know, the the amortization of those loans, we can show what the interest cost is in each year. So we can deal with that one. Uh, we understand how that's going to going to work. Um, we need to explain the difference between the net interest cost if you were to invest the difference. So which is exactly what we what we did. Um, and then explain the interest risk cost. So that was around the variability between the um, the one being fixed, another being prime, a uh, link to prime and variable. We then need to make him aware of special features. And then we need to give reasons why your recommendation is a better match for his business needs. Okay. So remember when we opened up and we looked at the him as, a, as the, the audience of this email, we identified that he was he was risk averse. Um, he, he was he was uncertain. He was unsure. He didn't want to take on more uncertainty. Um, so now we've got to make sure that we link our recommendation back to to him. Okay. Um, so this is probably one of the the most important things that you can do is is identify these instructions. Um, each of these instructions will have marks attached to them. And if you if you miss one of the instructions, it's going to, I mean, it doesn't help your cause, um, but it, it's really important that you identify all of these direct instructions from the examiner. Um, then, okay, then there's sometimes the instructions that are, that are implicit, that are, more, they come from the context and from reading, you know, the, the story about the situation. Um, so the things that, we are, that I picked up in this one were help me make the right choice. Um, I don't, I don't know how to compare. 
um, let me know which one you recommend and then not able to calculate the values associated with the loan himself. So they're, they're not explicit things that the, that the um, examiner has told you to do, um, but they should be leading you to say, well, have I dealt with those things? Have I helped him make the right choice? Um, have I helped him make the comparison? Um, have I done the recommendation? Apologies, yes. Ryan. Yes. Um, apologies, Ryan. Um, yes. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to really, really ask because um, there's a, I think there's a content um, that really, got, that really caught me off, um, especially the interest cost risk uh, and um, where you had to calculate like the savings components. Those ones really, really caught me off. So I just wanted to know, um, <clears throat> in an exam situation when faced with such, um, with such questions and you really don't know how to approach them, do you recommend someone to really try and write out what they might know about it because my because the risk is yes you're writing something but then you're completely losing the plot or you're completely losing the aim of the whole communication or you just leave out, or you just leave it out completely so I just wanted to know what do you recommend within that regard where you really do not know what to do yeah so and that does happen um, so um, particularly when we get to question two um I don't know, I think I've got a comment there and we'll, we'll come to it. I think only um it was something less than a quarter of the papers that I marked actually got the calculation right. Um so uh, this one was was much higher. Uh, people tended to get this one right. But there are a couple of things you can do if you get stuck on the the calculations. Um the, and I'll I'll come back and remind you of these just now. I'm trying to remember what I had in my list off the top of my head, but I'll mention them now. Um, is, is don't stress about the calculation because I think what happens is you, you get to this calculation and you think, OK, well, that sounds reasonable. And then I, I start trying to do something and then I get stuck and confused and, and, and then start to panic. And then you start to spend more and more time trying to solve this thing and then you write off the whole paper. Um, so the first thing is don't stress about the calculations. The calculations themselves, the actual answers, don't contribute a lot of marks. Okay. Where where it can hurt though is if you, you know, with with having done the calculation, you understand it much better and you can communicate it much better. Um, so so that's where it does become a little bit tricky. But for the the specific numbers and and calculation of the actual result, there, there's not a lot of marks even in the in the technical marking. Um, so what you can do, you, you could possibly make some sort of simplifying assumption. So you're, you're stuck. Just make something that you think will, will make it easier for you to actually get to something um, and then just finish it off. Um, or you could, I mean, in the extreme, you could assume the answer um, just so that you can, you can carry on. Um, so, so that's one of the, I think the first thing, most important, don't get too stressed and hung up about the calculation. Do what you can and then try to move on from it whatever way you can, either through an, an assumption or, or even just assume the answer. Um, I see there's another hand up, Matule. Yes, I also saw Matule's hand up, uh, Ryan. Oh, sorry, I was muted. I was actually talking. <laughs> um, so I've also heard that advice quite a lot, Ryan, to say, you know, the numbers don't really count much. Don't let them stress you. <laughs> but when I went through this question yesterday, um, you know, they're asking you to recommend uh, between the two. So you might, your, cal your incorrect calculations might lead you to an incorrect recommendation. So I I don't know, you know, how much of that would affect you negatively if my calculations led me to an incorrect recommendation? Because my view of it was, you know, my life would be over if <laughs> in a question like this one, if I get things wrong. Um, just how much would it affect you? Even if your co communication maybe is great, would you, do you still have a chance to pass a question like this one that says, 
make a specific recommendation and you don't based on your incorrect numbers. So, so remember in, in making your, your recommendation for, for Robert, you're considering a whole lot of aspects. So, so this question, even if the, let's say the interest cost had been higher for the, uh, for the fixed loan, um, it probably, everything was pointing you towards the fact that he's, he doesn't want any risk. He, he really just wants to know what his obligation is and, and, and be done with it. So almost just purely on a sort of non-numbers basis would be probably be pushing you towards the, um, towards the fixed loan as a recommendation. Um, and deliberately in this question, there were there was almost no reason to take the variable. Um, so everything was in the fixed favor. Just the fact that they had the option, the fact that they, I mean, yes, the interest cost was lower, um, the the uncertainty, the variability, everything was directing towards um, recommending the the fixed. It was yeah deliberately done so it wasn't sort of confusing or. Um, marginal as to which one was was better. Um, so, so there are other pieces. Look for other things in the question uh, that you can interpret to get to your your answer. Um, and and right. I mean, so yes, yes, the question. Um, right. Yes. Okay, I can't see. Yes, right. Um, um, right. Yes. Uh, I suppose what I was trying to say is, if you don't mind, can you please just go back to the calculation? Because it's just something that I'm trying to understand here with regards oh. to the second loan. Um, I think um, it was the calculations part concerning the savings. Um, I'm trying to understand, yes, the slide number eight. Slide number eight, okay. Yes. That one. Yes, what I'm trying to understand is, that whole opening capital um is this the capital that you would have taken from like the first um from the first um from the calculations from the first loan okay so, so think of it like let's go back one okay so if think of it like this that we've got to the end of the first year and we've got two people who one took the option one and another one took option two exactly the same people at the end of the first year um, the person who took the fixed loan will have to pay 147,000 rand but the person who took option two will pay 61,000 rand so there's a difference of 80 odd thousand rand that is unaccounted for and if I'm going to compare the two options, I need to I need to deal with that because loan the person with loan two is paying much much less, um, so, and and that the investment or the savings piece allows us to deal with the timing difference of the um, of the repayments, particularly in the early years, and then especially right at the end. So that 86 that you see there, um, that 86 there, that initial opening capital at the end of the first year. So this was zero at the start of the year because we've just started, we haven't done anything. At the end of the year, this is the difference between what the person with the fixed loan had to pay, less what the person with the variable loan had to pay. That's what's being invested in the savings. Okay. Does that help? It does help. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Is Mkuseli um, wanted to have a question? Mkuseli? Um, yes, thanks. Thanks, Billy. Um, so, so Ryan, thanks for 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 this. Um, yes, yeah, feedback. Um, maybe a question from from my side is, um, you know, um, I hear you talking about, you know, when when we I guess communicating this, um, you know, recommendation, we I guess need to cover all the aspects. So, so with regards to making this simplifying assumption, um, 
let's say you know in an extreme case i i have no idea how to calculate this yeah this whole thing um mm. and i just want to maybe assume yeah loan type a is yeah cheaper um to to um maintain than than loan, uh, loan type b um maybe mm. i make type of assumption um i think my question then is when i make that assumption do i find a way to I guess put it within, you know, the letter itself. Um, so without, I don't know, I, I think my question is, yeah, do I actually, you know, write in the letter itself that I'm assuming that, you know, loan type A um, is cheaper than, you know, loan type B? Or is it now, you know, part of my, I guess, you know, communication to find a way to, to word it, you know, in a, I guess, a nicer way within the, you know, the letter itself? No, so 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 my suggestion there is that it's it's an assumption that you're applying to enable you to get to the question. Um, yes. So I, I wouldn't be going into the um, I wouldn't be going into the actual email and saying there that you know, I wasn't able to do this. I'm making an assumption. Okay, I wouldn't do that. That's not what you're trying to communicate to Robert. You, you must still have the communication as how you would do it. So, so for example, you would say something on the lines of, um, you know, I've, I've calculated the interest and this is what the interest is, even though that might not be the right number. You know, you, you, you might have in your calculations, you, you made some assumption, you got to an answer and now you're going to use that answer in your in your response. The fact that it's wrong, you're going to you probably lose one mark. You know, or half a mark, or you know, it's, it's not going to be a lot. Um, so, so yeah, so you, um, uh, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't go. Your communication must still be as though you were communicating to your audience. Okay. As, you know, on the basis that you are, that you, that you know it, and you understand it, and you, you've got it right. Does it help? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry, Ryan, I was just thinking from the communication point of view, it would make much more sense if I knew, um, if I'm Robert, that um, that I'm told and I've given some figures because he does want the assurance, you see, and he also, um, even if those figures are wrong and, and, and receiving such a thing, I would always be wanting to see the figures. Otherwise, he would have done it himself. You see, he could make assumptions himself. Yeah, agreed. All right, can we, can we move on? Okay, okay, sorry. So, so what I'm hearing is, if you can make calculations, whip something up, give them what they want, even if it's not correct, but just satisfy the audience or the person reading. Yes, because you've you've got to remember that the primary reason that you're doing this is is we, we're trying to mark your communication. We we really don't want the we're not trying to do a contingencies paper or a compound interest paper. That's not the point of this. Okay. Um, so so focus on the communication rather than getting too hung up on the on the numbers. And if you have to make up a number, make up a number and move on. Okay, cool. Thank you. you can, I can. I've seen it so many times where uh, you you can see that someone tried to do something, um, uh, and they got to a point and just stopped. Um, and I suspect they stopped because they got stuck with understanding something, and then missed out the opportunity of, you know, just writing the balance of the the letter. Um, you got a far more marks from writing the rest of the letter than from getting that number right. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Um, um, sorry, Ryan. Um, yes. Yeah, just on slide to, um, 11, sorry, if you can just go to sl slide 11. Yes. Um, yes. Um, so I find that I've um, my issue is always uh, coming up with uh, okay sticking to the 650 words uh, kind of like uh, limit. So if I look at the instructions that I have here and the things that I need to explain and you know give reasons and all that, um, 
I end up getting to maybe like 640 words and I've just covered like maybe three quarters of, of this. So is there like um, a way of uh, maybe a rule of thumb that says uh, maybe one way, um, one sentence or two sentence, we have explained this, it's enough, go to the next one so that at least um, I cover as much of these instructions as possible and it, it to, to convey the message. Because uh, sometimes I, I get uh, like you know stuck on explaining maybe like let's say the difference in, in net interest cost. Then I write so many words explaining that that I run out of words now to explain the rest of the stuff. Yeah, I'm afraid that that is exactly the the skill <laughs> that is being examined is is can you be brief and can you get the points across in. Um, in, in this, you know, a smaller use of words or sort of the, the least words possible, you're going to get no marks for waffle. Um, our, our marking schedule has has very high level, um, very specific bullet points, um, and we, we're looking for those concepts. Um, and if you yeah, if if you go into too much, you know, you're just going to waste words, and you're not going to be able to make all the uh, comments you need to. So I would say yes, you need to. If if you've done some explanation and you've got the concept across, don't don't repeat it or, or you know do it again with different words because that's not going to going to help. Um, you you've got to try and keep it brief if you're going to get within the limit. Um, and I think the the one presentations are especially difficult in in this situation um, because you're normally given nine, ten slides, including your um, your your cover slide and your conclusion, and you can't make your slides too busy. So you really, really, really have to be um, brief and and to the point. So so that's definitely something worth worth practicing um, to to hone down and get you know just just mention what's necessary to say without the the waffle and, and overdoing the explanation okay uh, maybe when we look at the the sample answer you'll see some of the the type of um the, the type of sentences and, and how it's done okay all right um okay so so this was the so as part of our um preparation for the exam session uh when so the exam is is drawn up and as part of that process a um a mock or a sample solution is done as i say it's never it's never um the only solution there obviously plenty of ways to do it um but this is this was the, the sample one that was done for for this um, question. Um, I wonder if I can. Whoops. Hmm. Okay, so that doesn't. Oh, sorry. Huh? In when you use this in um, <laughs> not in presentation mode, I can open the actual content here. Yeah. Yes, you don't you don't have that option really in oh, teams definitely. because you've opened up in teams. So um, okay. Sorry about that. Um, oh. Did you? Okay. okay, so I wonder if I can. Can I? I could... Do you have it there? Not. I can get it. I'll get it um quickly and then um you, you you and then you can i share my screen and i'll just scroll down for you if you like the sample solution i've, I've got it right here okay fine then we can just change you can share that screen rather yes so you'll unshare and then okay Okay, do, do you see it? That looks good, yes. Yeah, okay. All right, um, so, um, right, so very, very brief, friendly introduction, 
don't waste too many words. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm not going to go into the format stuff. So there you, you just learn the, the formats. Um, so yeah, brief introduction just to, to get going. OK, then we want to try and get the, the features. What are the important features that he, he needs to be aware of? And this is where you need to look for opportunities to use tables and and graphs and and things like that. Um, I'm sorry, Ryan. You, yes. Um, so I I guess Billy can just chime in here. I don't want to dwell on it, but um, can you please scroll up to like the to and from there the beginning? So I was under the impression that you need to write the full name and surname, and then you write the email address after. Um, but I saw in the solution, it's also like this. So can you just please help me with that quickly? And let me, I will dedicate, I do address these specific questions. Um, uh, is it uh, Matule? Or who's no, it's Veronica. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. So um, la rather let's get to this, uh, this, this format we can deal with. Um, okay. And yeah, so. Okay. No um, don't worry about that too much because actually format is six marks only, right? Maximum as okay. well. I mean, you can it can be uh, save you completely, but yeah, we'll address it another time okay. if you don't mind. Okay. Thanks. Cool. No problem. Thanks. OK, um, so so table here is, is quite a nice feature for comparing things because we can put the, the features next to each other. It's very clear. It's um, it's very brief. We do still have to count the words. Um, so all the words in the in the table count. Um, so it's not like you, you know, they they free words, <laughs> um, but you 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 can be very brief, and it's a it's a neat way of of summarizing um, something like a comparison of of features. Okay. Um, then we went in, they asked us specifically to show the interest cost. So, um, so here we showed the fixed interest loan. So this is what his payment was due and the interest that he would pay. And then on the variable, the payment the due and the interest. Um, Ryan? Yes. Ryan? Um, yes. Sorry to interject there. Oh, excuse me. Uh, um, I think, um, uh, don't you think this can be another fatal mistake that one can make? I think if we look at the interest rate type, um, there was a specific instruction that was given in terms of the other information. I think if you look, um, it says the market interest rate yield curve indicates that interest rates are expected to increase over the next five years. So I'm thinking there about the variable, um, by option to the variable interest, don't you think there can be another fatal mistake that one can make? especially within the recommendation types. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, um, uh, of course, the, um, the fixed interest type based on our, based on the client's um, rec um, requirements, um, option one is the most suitable one. But I'm just saying, if this was not the case, then probably option two, we saw it being the most favorable, the most favorable one based on the fact that interest rates can either decrease or increase. And based on the fact that now what we're seeing is that it says market interest rate yield curves indicates that interest rates are expected to increase. So don't you think that's probably something that you can address there as well by just saying that interest rates are expected to increase in terms of the variable interest? Just as yes. a side note. Yes, so, so the, the, the question, um, was directing you to keep the calculation simple on a fixed interest. So it specifically says use 10.25% as your as your prime rate for the calculations. So so I think right. presenting it like this is correct, but you do need to deal with the fact that there is a risk that the rate will be, you know, that the, there's more risk in the variable, and we'll come to that just now. Um, but there's, there's definitely more risk in the variable that interest rates will rise and that the loan would cost more. Um, but it's it's one of those things that's contributing to your recommendation is that that extra risk is there. Um, but for the calculation piece, um, the question was specific. Use 10.25 as your prime. Okay. Um, so I have a question. So, can you hear me? Yes, yes. 
Okay, so the part about the interest costs. Um, so I saw the question and it, it, it seemed like it was focusing on annual and total interest. So what if like you left out um, the payment due and you just wrote the interest and the total interest and compared those? Um, yeah, because I think that's what I did, but I can see that was also important to add there. Yes, the key thing that we're after is the, see the, the payment due is not really a, um, a real difference. So, I mean, if you have a look at those two, if you were to deduct payment due less interest, you get 500,000 on fixed interest. And if you did the same on variable, you'd get 500,000. So the payment due is not really the important number. The important one was the interest. How much is this thing costing you? You're always going to have to pay back the capital, no matter what. Um, but it's the interest piece that is the the key um, key difference. So what if you left that payment part out then, like in your let in your email? Uh, if you let say this column out. Yeah. Uh, for I've got a I can't remember. Mm, I have to go back to the instruction. So I'm trying to remember whether it specifically said show the payment or not. I can't I can't recall offhand. It it said um, I have it open. So it just said show him the difference between the annual and total interest that he would pay. So for me, I just said okay, we're looking at interest, and I just cut out the whole payment okay. thing. Okay. Well, then there wouldn't be there wouldn't be marks for the the payment. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. And then this is where we then deal with the so so we need to deal with the fact that if you took the variable interest loan, you could save the difference. So we now deal with that piece. Uh, you earn the interest and that gives you a reduced interest cost for the variable. Okay. But then we still note that that's more than the even that net amount after your savings is still more than the interest cost of the fixed loan. Okay, so now we've, we've dealt with that net interest cost after the, the savings. Okay, but you can see how, how brief it is. Um, it's just getting to the point quickly and giving the, the information with just enough explanation. Um, okay, then we deal with the interest rate risk. So we say it's fixed for the five years, so you know it's going to cost you. Um, the variable is uncertain, it's linked to prime, and that's where we deal with the, the comment that was raised earlier about the variability. Um, but we say that that's probably not going to happen because the indicators are that interest rates are likely to, uh, um, uh, the in increases are more likely than a decrease. Okay. So therefore the fixed is going to be more appropriate. We then deal with his business needs. We talked about the uncertain cash flows and the variability. Um, um, and the fact that he's going to have this big capital amount that he needs to pay at the end. Um, and then the last piece was just dealing with this early settlement. So there was this extra option uh, if you want to settle. And here you would, we gave just an example of how much it would cost if they were to settle at one year. It didn't really ask a lot of detail about the calculation of the, the settlement. So you really just needed to talk about it, that the fact that it was an option to settle early and you would only use it if it was beneficial. Um, so therefore it was, an, it was a value added feature. Um, and then the important one was the interest that this one can't be settled early and then conclude by dealing with the recommendation. Okay, so for all those reasons that I've, I've given, um, lower cost, the risk, um, early settlement, that you would be able to use it, and then I recommend that you take the fixed interest. Okay, so yeah, so that was just to give you a bit of a flavor of um, of how it can be tackled with keeping the the word count um, within your constraint. Okay. All right. I'm going to. Can I close? I'm going to close that. Yep. 
So Ryan, while you're closing that, I just want to also uh, make a comment uh, now about the word constant that came up. And um, so the thing is that for the word count, it is important that you should state the word count because four marks generally are awarded up to four marks for, for you doing so. And you get the full four marks if you are on point with that word count. But either way, there is a little bit of leeway. Um, so about... Uh, uh, 5% or so, and so up to 675, you would then, or 674, basically, you would get two marks, and 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 also on the negative side, um, so less than, than the 650, so 625 um, or something like that. So, so um, for those who have those concerns, you also need to ask yourself, well, um, I'll just have to sacrifice that because I actually just can't make it any 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 shorter. Uh, maybe there were some constraints, but we would certainly penalize you if you went to 750 words, because then then you're actually using far too many words for that. Um, and and it is part of the challenge that you should try and meet the expectations of the word count. And and also, you know, therein lies the reason for the, the exam as well um, for that type of assessment. But it is also taken into account by the examiners. Um, so there's there's that, and and with regard to the format, we prefer you to say, if you're going to a client, you definitely, if you're to and you're from, you would then have the the full name of the person and then their address afterwards, because that's how it would be in their business uh, circumstances. And just just do it that way, so that you don't lose marks on that format. I just want to answer that one. I think uh, uh, that was also raised earlier. Thank you. Okay, all right. Is, is my presentation back? Presentation is back. Okay, it's back. Okay, then um, what I found quite um, useful in doing one of these presentations before was just from, from my experience of, of marking papers, um, what, where does it go wrong? Um, on the, mainly on the, on the technical side, um, and and where do where do people um, yeah what mistakes do they make and, and where does it cost them the the exam? Um, so the, the first one is the the thing about the instructions. Um, in in this one there were there were eight specific instructions, and and so often um, some of those instructions are are left out. Um, and it, it's going to be very difficult if you've only dealing with, you know, half the instructions you were given um, to be able to get a, a decent mark. Um, in, in this in in this one, the, there were three um, aspects that were commonly admit, omitted. Um, so the good candidates who did these, those are, tended to be the ones that passed. Um, and those that didn't deal with these, um, you know, had a much, much harder chance of, of passing. Um, the first was, and I think I actually got more detail. Okay, so the first one is around dealing with the interest rate risk. Um, so, you know, simple things like we, we were talking just now about the fact that prime can, can vary, can go up, can go down. Um, we've got information around that increase is more likely than a decrease. Um, we, so the information was there, but you know, a, a good handful of, of candidates didn't even deal with it. Um, and I, I don't know if it's a, a pressure and a planning thing as to because it, I mean we know from our you know the, the, our study background, we know that this is an important feature to talk about. Um, and we were given the instruction to do it, yet it wasn't it wasn't covered. Um, so obviously, in future in other exams, it's not this specifically, but I, what I'm trying to get to is that um, we might think when we look at it like this, it seems like such an obvious thing. Why would we not talk about the interest rate? But it happens; it gets forgotten. And I can only think it's because there isn't a methodical approach to identifying all the instructions that need to be dealt with. Um, and then the second part was around 
relating that back to his business needs. Um, so and his needs that you know the that the uncertain uh, variable interest rate added risk. So there's a little bit more than just the pure um, risk of interest rate movement, but risk is relative to who's taking on that risk. And so so it was important to talk about his needs relative to to that risk. So those are yeah. So that's interest rate risk was one of the instructions that was missed quite a lot. Um, the early settlement um, again. I, I think a lot of a lot of people struggled with understanding the early settlement cost. There were people who illustrated um, early settlement costs, so they would do a calculation and they would they gave some information in their in their email. Um, and it was completely way off. So I think there was some some uh, difficulty with understanding how that settlement, that early settlement feature worked. Um, so um, I think here, if you did illustrate an early settlement charge, it is it is useful because it showed understanding. It showed how that you understood how the process worked. But more importantly, it was it was just an option. It wasn't a real cost that you that Robert was incurring. Um, it was only it was something that he could use if it was beneficial to him, and that was the the important piece about the early the early settlement. Um, it was an added value option for the um, for the for the fixed one. Um, okay, and then the last one. Um, is just yeah, showing the interest earned on the savings. And this might tend to, just going back to the question that was asked earlier about, you know, where did that capital come from in the that calculation that I showed? And it's quite possible that there was a lack of understanding that you had to do something with the difference between the repayments of the two loans. Otherwise, you can't really compare them. Um, because you're not comparing like with like, you've got to you've got to deal with that difference in repayments. Um, it's possible also ran out of time, um, and that this was you, know, you deal with as much as you can, run out of time, and then didn't actually end up completing the um, or dealing with all the the instructions around the the savings interest and being able to net it off. Um, but it was quite important to be able to. Compare the timing of the compare the cash flows because of the different timing. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, this is another one that I and this has been common uh, across the. It's not specific to this paper. It's this is a very generic, um, very generic issue. That accuracy is important and. Calculation errors is only one piece of accuracy. Um, there's a lot of other aspects of accuracy. So um, just copying numbers from the question to your solution. Um, so often someone will take a number and copy it across incorrectly. Um, and it is a, you're immediately you're going to be in a, in a difficult situation if you're using the wrong numbers to, to begin with. Um, if they're if they're facts that you have to present back, and you're presenting the wrong numbers back, or you the information that you were given you're not reflecting as it was given to you, you know there's there's no way you're going to get any marks for for those things, and they're easy marks, they're really straightforward marks. Um, so so pay very, and you'll be amazed how often it happens. Um, so be very, very conscious of taking the information correctly from the question into the solution. The next one is about just being being specific in words. So I just I pulled this out of one one example. Um, so fixed interest rate over the life of the loan, the bank has offered you 14.5% with a fixed interest and then was the rest of the paragraph. Now you might think, well, that, I mean, that looks right. But the important thing that's missing is there that it's an annual interest rate. We need to say that that is 14.5% per annum. That makes a big difference to you know, understanding this, this information. So, so, so 
and I know word count is is you're under pressure, but you can't you can't have vague statements that can be misinterpreted. You need to be you need to be accurate with your with your statements. Um, so uh, I'm trying to remember why I picked on that second bullet. <laughs> with the variable interest rate loan, the interest rate can vary over the term of the loan. Okay, so the and this this is a very subtle one. Yes, the interest rate varies, but it's really the prime rate that's that's varying. So it's not the the, the margin on prime that's fixed, that's guaranteed for the client, but it's the prime rate on which it's linked that is varying. So so uh, and I know these are very pedantic things, but I'm I'm trying to make an example of them for you to have a look very carefully at um, the statements you make and, and be very, very specific. Okay. Um, and then just blatant incorrect statements. Um, so this, this one also is a extract from a, a sample from a from an actual script. You know, if this amount were invested at three and a half percent a year, I mean nowhere in the question does it say that. Um, it was invested at prime less three and a half percent. So, you know, and incorrect statements are somewhere where you can get into deep trouble. Um, this is the source of fatal errors um, where you, you say something that is blatantly untrue or false or misleading. Um, that, that type of thing can get you sort of severely penalized. Um, so, yeah. Things that are, are blatantly incorrect and and important things. I mean, they they're not that important. It doesn't matter too much. But um, but you know, if they are important things, they need to be stated correctly. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. So and then the other is just to you know use the information that you that you're given. Um, so you were given this, Robert understands how loans work and the charging of interest. So it's deliberately telling you that you, you don't need to go into a lot of detail around explaining how loans work and how interest will be applied. He, he knows how that happens. Um, it's just the actual calculation that he, he can't do. Um, so yeah, so use the information you're given and then the other, this is also very important, is is be wary of of one sided views. Um, that even in a situation where you're expected to give a recommendation, it's still expected that your view is balanced. Um, you're still presenting all the information, the factual information, and you are then making a recommendation. You are, um, uh, yeah, don't. Don't get, um, you know, hung, don't get, um, what's the word, uh, tied up in, in one angle of the of the solution and only deal with that and, and take a sort of a lopsided view. You, you need to take a balanced a balanced view. Um, and then, especially when we're commenting on things going into the future or things that are uncertain, um, it needs to be very clear that you are that it is an uncertainty. Um, don't make things facts that are not that are not facts. Okay. Um, right. Okay. And then the last thing was just pulling everything together. Um, quite quite often, and it's, just, it's quite possible it is a time a timing issue. That conclusions are often quite poor, um, and there are quite a lot of marks available for pulling your conclusion together with the important facts and, and concluding the, the, the communication properly. Um, um, because it, it leads towards the overall impression of, you know, is this, um, was this communication useful to, to the audience? So um, yeah, very, very important that you actually have a conclusion and you pull it together tie back to what your intended purpose was um, and yeah um, 
So just be conscious. I suspect that's because of time that people don't get to do a decent conclusion. So it's it's important to manage your time so you give yourself the opportunity to do this to do this properly. Okay. All right. Um, so that was that was question one. Are there any sort of uh, overall questions that perhaps we haven't addressed? Um, can I? So in terms of question, it's not really a, a question. I, I just remember that someone earlier commented on um, struggling with word count. And for me, if it helps, when I attempted this question, I was over by like 100 words. <laughs> I had, I think, about 750 words. And in going through maybe the model solution, I realized that my key problem was that I hadn't considered the instruction that this person understands, you know, how loans work. So there's a lot of information that I could have summarized in, a, in that table of key features that I didn't. Um, and I just wrote way too much. Like um, in my table of features, I had that, but I only had, say, I'm just scrolling. I, I only had the loan amount, the term, the interest, the installment, and everything else I explained in words. And, and that's what really okay. killed me. So maybe it's just an issue of being very careful of the instructions that you, I mean, the information that you're given. And for me, I think my, my thing is I hadn't really considered the fact that this person understands how loans work, so I didn't have to say so much. Yeah, I yeah, hope that helps. A very, help, very helpful point. Very good. Great. Thanks, Matule. So Ryan, I'm just wondering in the interest of time whether we shouldn't maybe move on because people did ask questions quite a lot in your presentation. Okay, yep, um, yep, happy to do that. Uh, and that's of course if everybody is okay with that. Is everybody all right with that? Um, you can show a hand if you're okay. <laughs> Great, okay, thank you very much. Okay, yes. I'm just going to stop for a second just to open up the second presentation. So Nele, are you saying you have a question or are you agreeing it was fine to go on? I was actually agreeing. Sorry. Great, thanks so much. Thank you. Just while Ryan's doing that, um, it is a challenging task to try and draw the threads of everything together. But that conclusion is something that you need to work on. Um, and, and of course, you're not wanting to restate everything in as many words as you did before. But you just want to draw them all together. Uh, and and you, could, you could do that very well, um, just reiterating uh, Robert's position. Uh, he's, you know, what would work for him in uh, by his own admission, he's the, the risk adverse, the assurance he wants, etc. Um, so so conclusions are are really an area that you can practice on, especially from the the communication side. Language. And choices. Sorry, I've done something strange and I can't get it back up. Um, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no problem. OK, um, the. Uh, 
I think the important thing, uh, the takeaway, is that the, the more time you spend on um, organizing your um, what is required, the, the planning stage, and, and also making a note of those instructions, as Matule also showed us, um, that, that, that she gave an explanation of, of those terms. Um, I, as a marker, I have found repeatedly over the years that that, that happens. That happens when the examiner has said expressly that, that there was understanding uh, on, on the audience's part of certain technical concepts. Perhaps it's annualized returns or something like that. And um, yeah, and then you, you save for yourself, you see. You save it. You save those words for yourself. Or you can just have the disclaimer, as you already know about interest rates or whatever. So it's insisting on showing me a notes page for some reason now, but anyway, okay. Um, is that, does that work? Something looks off. I have it. Oh, OK, that looks good. Was it fine? Oh, OK. Um, the, the last the last screen was fine. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Is, is that was all? That looks good. OK. All right. Um, so, um, so the process for this question is, is the same. Uh, we're going to go through the same structure. Um, and then just at the end, just uh, I've got a couple of other bonus tips that I'll really include as well. All right. Um, so I think um, no reason to, to change the plan. Um, follow the same thing and so so this one was maybe a little bit off the off the wall a little bit different um, you can only ask so many questions about uh, traditional actuarial things um, so this one tried to bring in something a bit different and the idea we here was that you are presenting to young teens who are at a subject choice and career day, and you're trying to excite them about, about maths. So the idea is that you're gonna tell them a, a story uh, about uh, ancient Egypt, and, um, and then put that into a presentation and, and present that. Um, so, um, so the, the key thing about this one was, Again, recognizing who your, your audience was and obviously completely different to, to the first question. So here we were dealing with young teens and they are at school. I mentioned the subject and uh, career and subject choice. And then the other thing about this audience is that we want, we were told that the message that we need to get across to them is the power of mathematical thinking. Um, and this is this is important because of we want to tie the the story and the conclusion back to this objective. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So the facts that we were were given in the question. Um, so we were given that uh, we had erratus themes who decided in 2020 BC that he was going to measure the circumference of the Earth. Um, 
obviously this is a uh, not something you can practically do. It's a it's a something vast, and we would need to use some uh, mathematical thinking to to solve. We were given that he had access to a a well that was very conveniently placed relative to the sun. Um, we were told about an obelisk that was some distance away. We were told that they measured the distance, that he measured the angle, and then we were given some facts, or, yeah, some details as to how to um, do the, the calculation. Okay, so. Um, so, okay, the, so then we were given the facts about the calculation. We were, there was a method to estimate, oh my God, the purpose was a method to estimate the circumference of the Earth. We're told it's it's round, um, it's made up of segments, um, and that we could that we could measure a segment length. Um, that, sorry, the measurement of a segment length was this eighty shunas, um, which apparently is a genuine measure, um, and that we had parallel lines, parallel imaginary lines from the from the sun, going down the well. Um, so it was you know, perfectly in line with the well because it didn't create any shadows. But the obelisk, which was some distance away, uh, the 80 shown us away, the sun created a shadow um, at the same time. Um, we were told that um, the angle that that shadow formed on the Earth was 82.5 degrees. Um, we just trust the accuracy of the, the measurement. We'll comment on it later. Um, we're told about the sum of the angles in a triangle, the angles in a, in a circle, um, and we're given Euclid's alternate angle theorem. And we're given that one shown us is 80 kilometers, and that the actual circumference of the Earth is 40,075 kilometers. Okay. Um, so there's quite a, this one, I think, because this question is obviously not using um, actuarial background. There's obviously a lot more factual information that has to be presented um, so that you can you can tackle it. Um, and then you were given this diagram to try and assist with with understanding it. So the parallel lines going down the, the well, the lines, the, the sun hitting the obelisk, which is standing there, creating a shadow, and then we're told that that angle over there is the 82.8 degrees, and that this distance was 80 shonas. Okay. So then, so that's pretty much all the facts we were given. Um, we then can do the calculation. Um, so we worked out that this angle here this is a triangle, right angle triangle. That's 90 degrees, 82. We know this angle is 7.2 degrees to make up the 180. By Euclid's alternative alternate angle theorem, we know that this is 7.2. And if we know that this total circle is 360, then there must be 50 segments. Each of those 50 segments are 80 shown us. So therefore, the circumference must be 4,000 shown us. And the circumference in kilometers then would be 40,000, because they are roughly 10 kilometers to one shown us. And then we can just make a mental note of the comparison between the estimate and the actual. OK. Um, so. So people, uh, the, the candidates who wrote this really did struggle with this um, calculation. Um, there were, as I said before, in the earlier, um, when I was talking about question one, in this calculation, it was less than 25% of the candidates were able to, to work out the, the 40,000. The 40, um, and I think it's probably because it did, it is, it's unusual. It's, it wasn't one of the expected type um, calculations, but um, it should be within the 
grasp of of everyone um particularly because everything to be able to do it was there and if you approach it um working through all the steps um, that were given you, you should be able to get it okay um so besides the calculation you just want to also understand the context um there are a whole lot of reasons why it's approximate the earth is curved we've assumed the segment is flat um the distances the measurements could be wrong so maybe i mean they they use a what were they told their royal paces measure the the 80 shonas um that could be wrong the angle we, we don't know how they measure the angle it could be incorrect and then we were only given an approximate conversion of a shonas to a kilometer but having given or even though they were approximate the result was fairly accurate so that that's our context of this calculation that we've that we've done okay. all right so then moving on are there any questions on the on the calculation all happy all right so then um the instructions so we were told that we need to present um, and we had, were told that no more than nine slides, including the title and concluding slide. We had to get the message across about the power of maths. We have to give a statement of the, the problem. We describe the, the method and it tells you to include some, some suitable graphics. Um, and you're, you're given a, a fairly good graphic in the, in the question. Um, you need to explain the measurements that were done and any other inputs used, give the results and then why possibly inaccurate and then conclude with a, a link back to your back to your purpose. Okay. Um, and then you were also given some instructions that were implied by the context. So you were given um, three initial slides and they included five agenda items. So I often get asked as to whether you should just take those agenda items as given, or should you be doing your own? Um, and my view on this is that you should take what you've given as an implicit instruction. If there's something wrong with it, then fix it. But generally, if you've been you know, you're given an agenda to follow, um, then use that as part of as, as, as part of your instructions. Um, but it doesn't mean that uh, if the format on the agenda is incorrect or the um, the way it's been they've written, you know, I don't know, maybe a mixture of questions and statements, and it's it's not a, a pretty agenda. Fix it. Um, but generally, use the agenda to your advantage to. Um, uh, as, as an instruction. Okay. All right. So this was the oh, this was the sample. So now I'm going to have to do the same thing again. Okay. So there's a sample solution. So I'll just stop sharing for a second and open it. Does that, does that come you through? It comes through, but it's a little um, off balance, but it's it's almost right. No, it's okay. Uh, I think I think that's okay. Just a little bit big, perhaps. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Yeah. 
So while Ryan is getting that um, presentation up, the exam sample solution, um, I just wanted to say to you that um, with regard to presentations, there's so much technique that you can use, you can get, be on top of before you get a question that will help you to save time um, and then you can concentrate more on what content to put into the slides. Um, and and the other good things like the explicit instructions and, and so on. And for this particular question, the linking back to the purpose, I'm glad that Ryan mentioned it because for the communication markers, that was very important to know why why give such a presentation when in fact uh, it's it's is to show the the power of mathematics and and they're giving them options okay something going a bit crazy now yes mm. I think it's because I'm using a second screen that's causing lots of confusion. Okay. 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 Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So, all right. So, this was the sample solution. Um, this was the gender that you were that you were given. Um, I'm not going to comment too much on that. Okay, and this is pretty much in line with what was given as the third slide in what you were what you were given. Um, but it's trying to create this engaging um, uh, story. Um, so raising the question, creating the interest. Um, and trying to keep it in terms that are going to be suitable for for this audience. Okay. Um, so so this is the the problem that we are that we are trying to trying to solve. Okay. So this. Um, so so now we're going to give the information. So we have to give the observations and the um, the, the the story. Um, the slide is probably a little, a little busy, um, and you, if you could probably try and make it a little bit briefer. Um, it's it's hard, um, but it is. It would be preferable if it was a little bit uh, less dense with information. Um, but we've got the graphic, and we are telling the story of um, what Elvetta's themes was was on about. Um, what's also important with the presentation is you don't need to spell out everything. You don't need to say all the words that you're going to that you're going to say when you're doing the presentation. Um, you can just have the the brief uh, commentary. So, for example, um, the dry well, Midsummer's Day do, at noon, no shadow. So you you can use those types of very brief bulleted statements to to get your your point across. Um, OK, so I'm not going to go into a lot of the detail because I, I explained the, the calculation before, um, but we're trying to show where the where the how the calculation was done um, and how, how clever it was to to think about something, a calculation like that to to solve something as big as the circumference of the Earth. OK. Um, so just carrying on the, the calculation. Um, and you had enough slides to to be able to to do this. Um, and then importantly, where could it have gone wrong? So you were asked to to say this. Um, uh, so we talk about the measurement, we talk about the conversion, the measurement, the angles, but the conclusion was that it's actually it's it's pretty it's pretty accurate. Um, and then this was the, the the important one about trying to tie it back to the purpose. 
So we're trying to say, well, look at that amazing problem that Eratosthene solved. Um, what future problems can be solved uh, and linking it back to your purpose of your presentation of using mathematics um, to solve problems um, and make them excited about studying maths. OK, so, so this one is a sort of very different type of question. Try to give you all the information you needed to do the calculation and then have to present it back to to the examiner for the benefit of the, the audience. OK. Um, all right, and then I was just the concluding slide. OK. All right, so now I've got to get this right again. And I see there's some questions there. Um, maybe you want to answer. Uh, there was uh, Chandika. You, did you have a, a question to ask? Uh, yes. So I'm noticing how important the planning is. So if I have to dedicate, it's a three-hour paper. So I dedicate one and a half hours to each question. Is it okay if I have my planning to be about half an hour to forty-five minutes? It, re it really does depend on the t the nature of the question, I would say, but you need it. <clears throat> I would say it needs at least uh, 20 to 30 minutes on, on for preparation on a question. You do get 15 minutes reading time for this paper. And in that time, it's important for you to read those questions very, very carefully and ascertain which one uh, you would be able to do first. And you should do the one that is easier for you first. That is that that I believe to be to be important because they both count the same amount. So that's what I would say. Um, and um, so, so the, it's no hard and fast rule. You must give yourself sufficient time to plan. So, but if you, if, but you need to watch the time so that you don't go over time. You really mustn't go over time for things because you need to to get onto that second question. You see. Thank you. But it's, it certainly helps having a um, so in your your practice questions that you're dealing with, set yourself a time budget for each part of the the process, um, and then so your planning is important, and then also at the end being able to review it and edit because your there was a comment made earlier. I, I tried this. I, I ended up with you know 700 odd words. You need to do a little bit of editing at the end to. You know, to to finalize your 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 solution um so yes i, th I think planning uh, your time and what you spend it on is absolutely critical all right so then um so this one uh, just also going through again what what i've picked up from marking papers and where um where people went wrong uh, you know, went uh, made mistakes. So um, here, the commonly admitted, so very similar themes to what I covered in question one. Um, omitting instructions, most important. So here, there were people who didn't describe the method, didn't describe the calculation, didn't bother to deal with why it wasn't accurate, and then importantly, didn't actually conclude and link it back to the purpose. Um, and the last one, yeah, um, this this is going to guarantee you a fail. If you get told to do a presentation and you do it in Word, um, it's just it's it's not going to not going to work. Okay. Um, all right, so I won't go into all the detail, but um, the there's a lot. To, the problem here was that there's a lot to cover. Um, so you've got to be very, very brief in your um, describing of the method, um, but you can do it by very um, being very, very specific. So, so what I did here was I, I took some things from the, the marking schedule just to show you the type of things that were being looked for in these inputs. Um, and it's these are the key phrases or key pieces of information that needed to be presented back in the description of the of the method. 
um, and then yeah. Um, um, so describing the method, yep, lot to cover, and you need to get get through that. Um, uh, further on the method, yeah, um, yeah, I'm going to go into more on that. So yeah, and then here the comment that there were a significant number of people who really struggled with the the calculation, and this is possibly one where we've made a comment. I made a comment earlier on that you know make an assumption. Um, if you can't get it right, you can't understand what's going on, make some simplifying assumption and just and just go with the number. Because I think a lot of candidates here got stuck in this calculation and were determined to solve it, couldn't, and then didn't really end up doing much of a presentation at all. Um, so I would definitely, if you start feeling like you are not getting anywhere, make that assumption and, and, and move on um, and get the rest of it done. Okay. Um, the other thing to think about is, is reasonability. So apply some, some judgment. So if I recall, there was one of the solutions that I marked came up with a, it was a, it was a ridiculously low number um, compared to the actual measurement you were given. Now, if you get a result that is way off and you're trying to do a presentation to people encouraging them for on, on taking maths and the power of maths, you would expect the, the result to be fairly accurate. So, so if you get something that doesn't make sense, um, just you know, apply some reasonability assessment to the results that you get. Um, because if they are um, yeah, if they weigh out like this one, this example, if they're not giving you, if your method's not giving you something that is close to the actual, there's probably something that's gone wrong, um, given the purpose of this presentation. Um, all right, and then, okay, then, yeah, the candidates didn't cover why it was inaccurate, um, and there were quite a few things. You had to apply a little bit of judgment. So think about someone walking from one place to another to measure something um, that must introduce some inaccuracy. Um, the, the time we're talking about, 220 BC, how would they have measured an angle? What sort of tools would they have had to be able to do that? So you do, you would need to think a little bit about what those, but any of your inputs into any calculation, you could run through a list and say, these are all my inputs. Um, are they guaranteed or not? Um, are they, could they, could they vary? And any of those things are sources of ideas for something that might be uncertain or um, where there's a risk or something along those lines. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, the last one was the conclusion. You, you really had to tie it back to the um, purpose of showing that you can solve really, really big problems by, by mathematical thinking. Um, yes, we accept it's not not perfect, um, but it's very good. And then, um, what are you know what could these what could these school children do in future with the the mathematical skills that they might they might get? Okay, so that was the the important part around the conclusions. Um, okay, I think I've I've spoken about accuracy quite quite a bit. Um, I just included a little, some different examples. Um, so the, the Earth was round, i.e. 360 degrees as shown by Aristotle. So I'm not really sure that that's telling us what, that they understand where the 360 degrees was going to be used in the calculation. Um, because remember the important thing was around the, you know, the, the segments that are making up the, the Earth to be able to get to the 50. Um, so there's some funny things that happen as well. So some incorrect statements. Um, so apparently Redstein's didn't have an accurate time-telling device. I'm not sure why he needed a time-telling device. Um, but so those are the, you know, the time didn't come into anything. So there was no need to measure time. Um, things like what parallel might mean. Uh, parallel doesn't mean something's right next to you, right next to each other. 
So again, be very careful with the, the statements that you make. Um, yeah. So uh, and choosing your words, make make sure your words are saying what you um, what you mean to say. All right. Um, so, yeah, and then again, using the information you're given, um, if you've been through the process of identifying all your facts and you've made sure you've used that information, then you won't fall into this trap. Um, but there were quite a few candidates who who didn't realize or, or didn't use the fact that you were that they were told that the obelisk made a 90 degree angle to the Earth's surface. So you had your other angle to be able to get the sum of the angles in the in the triangle. Um, it's just completely not not used. Um, so I think it, that's why it's so important to go through that process of identifying the facts that you're given and looking um, and looking for opportunities to use and making sure that you've used all those facts. Um, and then here also it, when you're doing this type of presentation, it's important to be persuasive um, because you're trying to convince something, con convince your audience of a certain position. Um, so you must be persuasive and you want to push a particular agenda, um, but you need to be factual. Um, you've got to be honest with the with the facts. Okay. Don't make uh, don't make stuff up to to support your purpose. Okay. Um, okay, and as I mentioned for this one, there's a lot of information, so it was even more important uh, given that there was there was this volume of information as well as in a presentation style that you have to be very, very succinct. Um, you've got to try and get your the words that you put onto you each and every slide very specific to what you want to say, uh, um, but you still need to be clear. Okay, so don't don't lose the clarity, um, but you're consciously thinking of not including words that are not adding value. Okay. Um, right, and then I, I spoke last. In a, I sort of jumped ahead a bit here and spoke about because this is where the calculation was really, looked like it was particularly a problem. Um, and it's worth just reminding, don't don't stress about the calculation. If you do get stuck uh, on the actual getting to a final answer, it is a small proportion of the marks. Um, make an assumption and then carry on focusing on doing your communication and um, you know, delivering on that purpose that the examiner is expecting from you. Okay. All right. So I, I know there's a lot of in the second one, you know, a lot of you, you'll see the common themes that happen in the mistakes made, um, and those are the things that I think would serve you well if you can uh, ensure you don't make those those mistakes. And then, lastly, around your your plan, making sure that you've done those four steps. Um, of identifying the instructions, identifying the facts, understanding and, un and identifying or, or um, understanding your, your audience. OK, so I know I went, I went through that one quite a bit more quickly, but um, any, any questions before I go on to my bonus tips? All good. No. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So some of these we've touched on in the in the presentation, um, but maybe there are a few extra things that you can that you can use. Um, so we've spoken about accuracy. Sorry, my indentations went a bit funny. Um, learn the formats. Use practice questions to get your timing right. Um, so that you can allocate the right amount of minutes to each part of the process of planning, writing, and then reviewing. Um, I think getting comment from anybody, if you can get a, a work colleague to, or a, a friend or anyone, uh, just to read what you've written. They're not, they're generally not long solutions, so it doesn't take them a lot of time. Um, but if they can 
they can give you some comments of, of what they thought of it. That's always useful. You can, um, you know, you can gain quite a lot from that. Uh, we've spoken a lot about obje identifying objectives and instructions, the planning, planning your answers. Um, don't get distracted by the detail, the calculations. We've spoken about that. Also, keep your audience in mind the whole way through, because sometimes you can see in a solution that when the person started writing the solution, they were thinking about the audience. But by the time they got to the end, they strayed into using language words that aren't appropriate for that audience. So you, you need to keep that consistent through the um, consistently addressing the audience through the through the solution. Um, and then, yeah, keep your, your tone and your, your, your style consistent throughout. One of the suggestions, a practical suggestion that came up from one of the other examiners was that once you've finished your second question, so you did your, your first one, you, you moved on, did your second, go back and read your first one. You know, obviously, if you've got a bit of time. Um, because sometimes when you've taken your mind away from it a little bit, some things will be a little bit clearer to you, or they, you'll, you'll notice words or, um, you know, incorrect choice of words that you might have used before that will pop out and you, and you could get an opportunity to fix those. And it's just that taking a break, doing something else, going back to that first one can help with that mental process. Um, again, I'm sure uh, Billy's going to go through a lot more of this detail. Um, but simple things in letters and emails are you know, punctuation in salutation and sign off. So just knowing your your formats where punctuation applies, not being complete with with addresses, missing line items from addresses, um, not being disciplined with paragraphs. You want to try and structure your thoughts so that each paragraph deals with an idea. Um, your sentences can then construct explanation around that idea, but when you're ready with a new idea, move on to another paragraph. So it's clear that those things are are separate ideas. Um, headings and for, for letters or, or sections of things, um, headings very useful to create that distinction between uh, parts of the of your solution. Um, uh, lack of attention to detail, I, I gave you some of those examples around choice of words and accuracy in um, getting information across from the question into the solution. Um, it's just you need to pay attention to the detail. Jargon gets spoken about quite a lot. Um, very important depending on who your audience is. Um, simple things like uh, stating your word counts or getting your word count wrong. Um, you know, don't don't do that. Those are easy marks. Um, put the word count in if you need to. Well, you generally do, and and don't get it wrong um, because they are checked. And then writing numbers, uh, so things like words when they're big, when they are small numbers, and um, and digits when they are, are big numbers, things like that. Yeah. Um, presentations. So, in fact, when I was preparing this presentation, Billy had to correct me on my title, <laughs> where I missed some details from my title slide. So it is an easy mistake to make. So. Um, just pay attention to what detail you put on your title in your concluding question slide, if that's your concluding slide. Um, introductions to create context, get your numbering in, um, spoken about language, um, personalizing for the audience. Um, you know, so, so using appropriate graphics, um, using tables if you can, um, and in word choice as well. Um, the order of the slides, so we spoke a bit about the agenda, to so try and follow the agenda if, that, if the agenda makes sense, um, but you want to take your audience through a journey with the slides. You want to build on on, on what happened before, so, so make sure your, your order of your slides makes sense to telling that story. 
uh, graphs and tables, always looking, got to look for opportunities to use those. Any any opportunity you can, but only where it makes sense. Don't don't put graphs and tables in when they don't they're not appropriate. Um, but if there are opportunities to use them, then you can do so. Um, graphs not labeled obviously is a big problem. Um, it's not useful if you don't know what it's what it's about. Uh, similarly for for tables, if your if your headings are are not descriptive enough of what's in the table, um, that will be a problem. So to make sure that it's it's clear what you're trying to show with your graph or your or your table. Um, if if you've got an overwhelming amount of information or information uh, overwhelming amount of numbers in a table, you're probably showing too much. Um, so so look at a way of of summarizing it. You know, big volume tables will never be the intent of the examiner with um, uh, with the use of a, of a table or, or presenting information. It will usually be fairly succinct and uh, small amounts of, of data. OK. That's all that I have for you. Thank you so much, Ryan. That was a lot. <laughs> Not. Uh, the way in which you said it sounded like it wasn't much, but it was a huge amount. Um, so, any final comments from the from participants? I see, Sanele has a hand up. Great. Um, yes, might be from earlier right. one. Sanele, you have a question. I forgot to actually lower it early on. I'm so sorry about that. I wasn't raising my hand up. Okay, great. Thanks. Cool. <clears throat> um, I'd just like to hear if you feel, everybody, that you are a bit equipped to handle the next question based on the session today from, uh, and particularly from Ryan here. Um, yeah, I found, <coughs> sorry, I found this, <coughs> sorry. I found this very, very, very useful, um, especially being someone who just struggles with calculations. Like I get easily thrown off. So this kind of gave me some peace of mind and I'm feeling more confident and equipped. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ronnie. That's cool. great. And Matule, you want to say something? Oh, no, no, no. It's just my okay. phone, I think. Okay. Anyone else? Well, you, you're welcome to send your, your questions if they come up uh, during the week or whenever. Um, and I just want to formally thank Ryan for a tremendous amount of um, effort put into these presentations this morning, as well as the, uh, the actual delivery, which was really fantastic. Thank you, Ryan. I, I, I personally found it to be very um, accessible. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. OK, everybody, I'm going to conclude this meeting, uh, the session, so that I can um, harness the, the recording. Is that all right with you? I'd like to say thank you, everybody, for getting here this morning and today, and a lot to think about. I will try and put this on to the YouTube channel that is reserved just for uh, N211. Um, um, that will happen during the week sometime. And then I will also be loading you onto uh, the Vula platform, those of you who aren't there. Thank okay. You. A pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Yeah. Thank Good luck to you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks, 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 everyone. Great. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody, too. Mr. Iwa, how did you feel? Oh, I feel uh, relieved. I think Ryan uh, went into it into in, in very detail, so yes, I yes. can see where I go wrong, so I'm going to start practicing. That's fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Great stuff. Yeah. I'm sure there was something there for you, which is yeah. wonderful. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. OK, everybody. And class, thank you very much. And Lerato and all your contributions there. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Billy. Thanks, thanks so much. Billy, bye. Okay. bye bye.